On behalf of the British High Commission in Singapore, a very warm welcome to you all, and thank you for joining us to commemorate Her Majesty the Queen's 94th birthday today. Before we begin, we invite you to have your glasses ready for when we get to the toast. And don't forget to snap a picture of yourselves joining in using the hashtag that's currently on screen. We now begin with a speech by Her Excellency Cara Owen, British High Commissioner to Singapore. Welcome to the Queen's Birthday Toast, honouring Her Majesty's 94th birthday and the Singapore-UK relationship. I'm honoured to have Senior Parliamentary Secretary Dr Tan Wu Meng and all of you with us to celebrate. I arrived as High Commissioner a year ago. I loved the time I took to cover every inch of this island, from Durong to Changi, from Woodlands to Tampanese and Tanjong Pagar, to understand what made Singapore tick and to meet those who embody UK-Singapore linkages. The 2nd of January 2020 represented the first full year of the Singapore-UK Partnership for the Future. Agreed by our Prime Ministers, this partnership acknowledged our historic relationship but set our eyes and our task list firmly on what would forge our futures. Free trade, tech, climate and sustainability, knowledge, education and research, security and resilience. I've been extremely proud of what we've achieved. Our bilateral trade has risen 8% to £16 billion. More and more of our innovative companies have established here in Singapore. Our fintechs are changing the way that SMEs are serviced, payments are made, and regulations are implemented. Singapore will be a key node for us in our newly established Asia-Pacific digital trade network, helping innovative businesses to internationalise. We are committed to joint research into the impact of plastics on our precious oceans and we're exploring how greater biodiversity can halt the impacts of climate change. Our guest here today, Dr Tan, joined Senior Minister Tarman and Minister Ong on a trip to the UK where packed houses in the city heard about opportunities here in Singapore. These are just examples. There are 24 other formal agreements for new work in medtech, R&D, data, digital government, the arts, I could go on. Our Prime Ministers work together on global issues and as committed guardians of the international system. On June 4th, they supported global access for vaccines at the Vac Global Vaccine Summit, co-hosted by the UK. Secretary for Trade, Liz Truss, and Minister Chan Chan Singh speak regularly about how to advance modern free trade as a force for good in our world. Our militaries know each other and exercise side by side. As the UK government team here works to support all of this, I owe my thanks to my colleague, Her Excellency Fu Chi Xia, the outstanding and indefatigable Singaporean High Commissioner to London and her team for everything they've done. We could not ask for better travelling companions. In February, Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab included Singapore in his first overseas trip after our departure from the European Union. This signalled the importance to our future of this region and this country. He called Singapore a linchpin partner in Southeast Asia, with whom we're working to strengthen the UK's ongoing partnership with ASEAN. Since that visit, 2020 has been defined by COVID-19. It's changed life as we know it and our assumptions. We work together to keep our people safe and well, and in many of you are still living disrupted lives and my heart goes out to all who have experienced loss and family difficulty. Times of challenge reveal what is most important. Who do we reach for when things are tough? The UK and Singapore have reached out to each other. We have instinctively shared what we were finding out about this disease and how to cope with it, about clinical treatment, therapeutics and vaccines. We work to keep supply chains open and to support people's jobs. For me, this is the partnership for the future in living form. And at this point, I want to return to the Queen, whose message of unity and hope has inspired not only me and my colleagues here, but people all around the world. As Her Majesty herself said, at this time, we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavour, using the great advances of science and our instinctive compassion to heal. We will succeed. And that success will belong to every one of us. Thank you again for being part of today's commemoration. 
and for being the human strands that form the fabric of the UK-Singapore relationship. It is our honour to have Dr Tan Wu Meng, Senior Parliamentary Secretary with Singapore's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, deliver his address. Your Excellency Ms Kara Owen, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to Singapore, British residents in Singapore, our dear friends in the United Kingdom. On behalf of the government and people of Singapore, I would like to extend my warmest congratulations to the government and people of the United Kingdom on the very special occasion of Her Majesty the Queen's 94th birthday. Singapore and the United Kingdom share a historic relationship which began over two centuries ago and contributed to the foundations of modern Singapore. Today, this long-standing relationship has blossomed into a special bond. We have similar outlooks on the importance of free trade, promoting multilateralism and the rules-based international order. The breadth and depth of our relationship is encapsulated in the Singapore-UK Partnership for the Future, the P4F, launched last year, which also expresses our shared desire to forge ahead and look to the future. From the frontiers of the digital economy to sustainable business and innovation, from security and defence to education, culture and youth, Singapore's cooperation with the UK spans every sector, and I'm confident we can do more. The COVID-19 pandemic is a grave challenge for all countries, but this shared challenge has opened up new areas for cooperation. This includes regular exchanges between our health officials, including on vaccine development and manufacturing, sharing on the use of digital tools to combat COVID-19, and cooperating on supply chain connectivity. As Her Majesty the Queen said during her address to the UK and the Commonwealth on April 5th, international collaboration is the only way to defeat COVID-19. As a medical doctor who trained in the UK, I am particularly heartened by stories of Singapore healthcare professionals working on the NHS frontline, as well as their British counterparts contributing to our healthcare system. I would also like to applaud the UK government's recent success in hosting the Global Vaccine Summit, the GVS, which exceeded the target in raising 8.8 .8 billion US dollars of pledges. Our Prime Minister, Mr Lee Hsien Lung, was honoured to have been invited to share Singapore's contributions to this global call for action and our support for vaccine multilateralism. Our two governments also provided reciprocal consular assistance that enabled both British and Singapore nationals to return home, even as air travel was severely disrupted by the global spread of the pandemic. This crisis has significantly affected the sizable communities living in each other's country. Our British friends in Singapore are an important part of our community and the UK is host to one of the largest communities of overseas Singaporeans. Let me take this opportunity to assure you that the Singapore and UK governments are working closely together to jointly transition to a new normal that will address the concerns of all, including those who have come to call either country their home. I'm confident that both our peoples will continue to stand together and overcome the challenges before us, and in doing so, transform our respective societies and economies for the better. I wish Her Majesty the Queen continued good health. May the special bonds between our peoples continue to grow from strength to strength. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the National Anthem of the Republic of Singapore, which will be sung by renowned music teacher and director, Joanna Paul. 
Mari kita rakyat Singapura sama-sama menuju bahagia. Cita-cita kita yang mulia berjaya Singapura. Marilah kita bersatu dengan semangat yang baru. Semua kita berseru majulah. Singapura, majulah Singapura, marilah kita bersatu dengan semangat yang baru. Semua kita berseru, majulah Singapura. Please ready your glasses and join the UK's Defence Advisor to Singapore, Commander Martin Moore, in raising a toast to the President of the Republic of Singapore, Madame Halima Yaakob. Senior Parliamentary Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Madame Halima Yaakob, the President of the Republic of Singapore. The President, President of the Republic of Singapore. Of Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of the United Kingdom, which will be sung by William Moore, a student of Dulwich College, Singapore. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the Queen. Please join us in raising your glasses in a toast to Her Majesty the Queen. Senior Parliamentary Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the Queen. The Queen. The Queen. And now Staff Sergeant Rana Badur Gurung from the Gurkha Contingent of the Singapore Police Force will lead us in a musical tribute to the Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, as we near the end of this commemoration, please stand for the sunset flag lowering. The ceremony will be conducted by Lieutenant Commander Gary Brogan and Warrant Officer Ian Brown of the British Armed Forces. Sunset will be played by 3rd Sergeant Mai Sarah Aslan from the Singapore National Cadet Corps Command Band, Swiss Winds. Ceremonial sunset, ma'am.
Ceremonial sunset complete, Mum. Thank you for joining us in commemorating Her Majesty the Queen on her 94th birthday. On behalf of the British High Commission in Singapore, we wish you a very pleasant evening.